Hey folks, welcome back to our Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at the second edition of Carnival Zombie. Carnival Zombie is for one to six players, ages 12 and up, and games range anywhere from 45 to 120 minutes. Carnival Zombie is a cooperative adventure where you and your fellow players are going to be trying to escape Venice before the Leviathan and his many hordes of minions and undead bring the city to its knees and all of you. Your only hope is to escape by airship, by boat, or across the bridge to the mainland. Now, this is the second edition of Carnival Zombie. There's a lot of things to go over here. Uh, you know, we're not gonna dive really deep into gameplay because we're gonna look at some of the new stuff. And really, well, some of the main things to take note of is that the main core mechanics of the game are still here. You have your day and your night phase. And for setup, it's really interesting because there's a lot of different ways you can go based on how you want to play the game. There's the campaign mode, and one of the complaints about the original game was the length and how long it took to get into the game. So they've created a kind of a quick start guide to get deeper into the game faster, the story so far. And you can use this to enhance the gameplay and make it quicker for you. Also, there's all kinds of scenarios, and you can even bypass a lot of that and just go straight to the big boss battles. So they've done a lot of neat things here, but let's take a look at some of what's new. Now the first thing we're gonna look at is the aesthetics. They've really cleaned the board up. It, it just seems to pop more for me. The graphics are cleaner, more defined, and so forth. So you still have Venice, the city that you're traveling through by day in order to gain more items, and uh, find your optimal path through the city to escape. And depending on how you play this, again, will depend on how you get out, either using airship, boat, or you're crossing the bridge. And then you have the overall map area where you'll be defending, trying to escape, and destroy as many of the undead or creatures that come out. And all that is still pretty much there from the core game that it was originally before. Now, you have all the different types of creatures and all their different stats are printed on the board and then the slots for all your bosses that will come out. And then you have your day and night cycle and of course the terror track at the bottom and one of the nice things they did here too is that there's no longer that determined player order. You can mix that up as you so need to. Um, but as you move along the terror track and spin um, stress to do more actions and things, your characters are going to slide along there. And you don't want to move into the red, obviously, because then you become incapacitated. So really, you need to be mindful of that and also keeping track of what all is happening with these monsters and creatures as they close in in order to try to stop you from escaping the city. Now, the other nice thing about this map is that it's double-sided now. You flip it over and now you're in Milan and it can just continue the campaign into Milan where you actually can face the Leviathan. And the Leviathan, there's some different tracks here. The Leviathan has its health track and you can move him around the board and he's gonna be doing things that are particularly nasty. The other nice thing about the other side, the other adventure now is that uh, da Vinci is created all kinds of these amazing giant weapons that you can acquire through the game and really bring some hurt to the Leviathan and the minions. Also, Da Vinci has created a tank and an airship that you can use in the middle of the board as well. That tank is particularly awesome as you move through and destroy those minions. So there's lots of neat things in the new adventure. It's basically an expansion, but it really adds a lot of depth and gameplay. And literally, like they say, it does add so much possibility and so much replayability of this game. They've really enhanced every particular part of it. Now let's take a look at characters next. And so all the characters are here that you know from the original game and their stat cards are very clear. You have your day and night abilities and you have your starting weapon all defined on the card. Now each character also has their own set of deck of cards that you can tap into throughout the adventure you know, getting new items, getting better weapons, and so forth. Now there's a brand new character as well. I'm not even going to attempt to say his name, but he has some really neat chaining abilities. You can actually capture zombies and then use them to enhance his skills. So this character has a lot of neat new things to help you combat all the oncoming horde. 
The new items for this character are really unique and specific to this character type and really do some different things that we haven't seen before with the previous characters. You know, you have chains where you can chain up two infected on this card. You've got a uh, golem you can call upon and some really unique items and weapons throughout. Now, throughout the game, there'll be events that trigger. You'll be using the Nightmare deck for that, but the Nightmare deck also can affect when you're searching for something or locations, or it might affect your character. So it just depends on when and how those cards come up will affect different things, which is pretty neat. And of course we have the pile of corpses, which is one of my favorite things about this game. It's so much fun. At first you might look at this and go, well, that's easy. So what you do here, after you wipe out uh, minions, these cubes that are related to the minions, you take them off the board and you're gonna drop them on the pile of corpses. And yes, you're going to drop them on the pile of corpses from any height it says but as you drop them you know first off you're like hmm this is easy that seems like just a basic thing in the game but as it piles up oh my gosh so many corpses on so many cubes on this tombstone really start to affect you start to get nervous about dropping the cubes on there because if any of them fall off back onto the table well then they respawn immediately back onto the board so you have to be very cautious about dropping and it starts to be this balance game, which really is pretty neat actually. Just a small dexterity game built into this overall tower defense. Also, we have these new scenarios that you can tap into. Like I was saying before, they do very different things and you can just do this instead of like the main campaign. You have set up rules for each of these and it tells you the, what you need to do to in order to achieve the goals. Now, they do very different scenarios as well. One is more of a tutorial. Uh, one has like a trader component, but I do believe that Dr. Gordon's experiments it might be my favorite because as you complete the experiments, it enhances the dexterity game that you've been playing with the cubes. All kinds of different things going on here, really adding to the flavor of the game and just giving you a unique way to play. Now, of course, there's some additional things out on the board. There's the cubes that are the barricades. They now are brown, which really makes them stand out and easier to see. There's cubes that um, mark damage that are red, and there's the blue survivor cubes, which are basically fodder for you to use throughout the game. They can slow down a boss for an hour, or you might use them to sacrifice them to uh, stave off an attack of some sort. So the survivors really do become a valuable thing as you pull them out of the bag. There's also a black cube. The black cube is all about being paranoid. You're gonna be, if you pull a black cube from the bag, you put it on one of your characters in, this, in the terror track. So they're not only stressed, but now they're paranoid as well, and which prevents them from taking an extra action. They can't uh, absorb stress anymore because they're so paranoid, which is a great thematic aspect of this game. Again, so much theme, it is really just dripping with theme. All right, so that's just kind of a brief overview of some of the new things going on. And again, some of the core mechanics are still here. Like we said before, is that you have the day and night cycle and during night, you're trying to stave off all the attacks as the incoming horde comes in. And really that's the core of the game is that it's this tower defense style game where you're using your weapons to take out lanes or, uh, and just wipe out as many of these creatures and escape in time. Really, that's your whole goal is to get out of dodge. So you really have to work together in order to achieve those goals. And again, like I said, there's a lot of story here. There's a lot of different ways to play. I really like all the new changes and how they streamline the game and how you can choose to play a longer campaign or you can just shorten it up and play the boss battles or go off to one of these new scenarios. And again, the expansion on the other side of the board adds a whole nother level to the game. So there's just a lot to like. If you like the original zombie game, this is definitely one to check out. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview, and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form. So keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now with that said, you know, this game has so many enhancements, so many different ways to play, They've really done an amazing job making the second edition. I can't ever imagine going back and playing that first edition ever again. There's just a lot of neat things here. And, you know, they're funding very well on Kickstarter right now. But ultimately, folks, if this looks like a game that would be of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me. And until next time, 
We'll see you at the table. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff, in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.